chapter 14 and uh, look at verse 6 we'll just uh, probably read down through the rest of the chapter from the start of verse 6 we'll get the, the context of uh, what we're looking at here uh, this is the account of Caleb and when he goes in to possess the inheritance he was been promised all right it says then the children of Judah came unto Joshua in Gilgal and Caleb the son of Jephunneh the Kenzanite said unto him thou knowest the thing that the Lord said unto Moses the man of God concerning me and thee in Kadesh Barnea forty years old was I when Moses the servant of the Lord then uh, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to, to spy out the land and I brought him word again as it was in my heart nevertheless my brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people melt but I wholly followed the Lord my God and Moses swore on that day saying surely the land whereon thy feet have trodden shall be thine inheritance thy children's forever because thou hast wholly followed the Lord my God and now behold the Lord hath kept me alive as he said these forty and five years even since the Lord spake this word unto Moses while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness and now lo I am this day fourscore and five years old as yet I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me as my strength was then even so is my strength now for war both to go out and to go in now therefore give me this mountain whereof the Lord spake in that day for thou heardest in that day how the Anakims were there and that the cities were great and fenced if so be the Lord will be with me then I shall be able to drive them out as the Lord said and Joshua blessed him and gave him to Caleb the son of Jephthah and Hebron uh, Hebron for an inheritance Hebron therefore became the inheritance of Caleb the son of Jephthah the Kenzanite unto this day because that he wholly followed the Lord God of Israel and the name of Hebron before was Kerjath Arba, uh, which Arba was a great man among the Anakims, and the land had rest from war. Here we find a great man <coughs> claiming a great possession, uh, Caleb. And uh, I have enjoyed studying Caleb. I've been looking forward to preaching this from time. Uh, this week I've been, as, as little bits here and there, as I felt better and better, I've been uh, studying this. And I've, I've enjoyed it, and I'm, I've been looking forward to sharing this with you this morning. Um, here we find several things about Caleb, and uh, he is a, a great example for us as men to follow. You know, um, we probably recognize him mostly by the fact he was one of the spies, and he and Joshua were the two that gave the good report. Um, they come back and said, it's a great land. And God's promised to give it to us. We can possess this land. And of course, the other ten said, no, no, it's there's wall cities and words, but grasshoppers in the side of these. They're giants and all this, you know. And they had the pessimistic look, and they they couldn't. We, we can't do it. And they doubted God, and so God judged the nation, and they went through the wilderness for forty years. But God promised Joshua and Caleb, "You will go in." And here uh, we find that promise reiterated by Caleb, and now he's going to uh, lay claim to that promise. Amen. And so several things we see about Caleb. First of all, uh, he was a changed man. Second of all, he was a committed man. We see, third of all, he was courageous. Fourthly, we see he was consistent. And then uh, we see he made a claim. Uh, fifth, or sixth of all, here he, made, he coached others, all right? And then we'll see, last of all, he brought calm to his family. He brought peace and calm to his family and, and his nation. And so uh, here we see a good, a great example of a man of, of God and um, how God can use any man who will take a stand, amen, and do what's right and how God will reward uh, that man who does that. So um, let's uh, ask the Lord to bless his word and then we'll get right into the scriptures, all right? Lord, thank you for this morning. Uh, Lord, I thank you for the opportunity to share the word of God. I thank you for what you have, Lord. Uh, how you've encouraged me and challenged me with these scriptures. I pray that now, Lord, as they go forth, that you would speak to each one of our hearts and, Lord, make application uh, where, Lord, as needs to be. Lord, I pray if there's anyone here who's not saved, Lord, today would be the day that they would come to know uh, you as their father, that, Lord, they would uh, know, or what it means to be a part of the family of God and to have a heavenly father and a heavenly home. Lord, I pray for those of us who are saved, that you would speak to our hearts and, Lord, challenge us, Lord, to be a uh, uh, Lord, especially our men, Lord, to be uh, better leaders, and Lord, to have courage, and Lord, to uh, to walk in faith, and Lord, to trust you. 
uh, Lord, that uh, we'll bring glory and honor to you and lead, Lord, our homes and our families and our churches and our nations uh, in all godliness and righteousness, Lord. Pray you bless our time together here. May you get glory and honor through everything that is done. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. The first thing I want us to note is uh, Caleb's background. And I did not know this until studying out this passage for, for this, uh, script, you know, this sermon. But here, it's noted twice where Caleb comes from. Uh, look in there in verse 6. It says, Caleb, the son of Jephna, the Kenzanite. And also, then the last verse we read, um, I'm sorry, verse 14, says, Caleb, the son of Jephna, the Kenzanite, unto this day. He was a Kenzanite. Ken, Kenzanite. That's the best way I can pronounce it, all right? I think it's a long E there. A Kenizanite. Anyway, he's one of the ites, all right? I want you to go back. To Genesis, Paul, hold your place here. But let's just—I want to look at the cross reference, Genesis chapter 15, because it's very interesting where Caleb comes from. Genesis 15 and verse 19. Look at verse 18, if you will. Genesis 15, verse 18, says, In the same day the Lord made a covenant with Abraham, saying, Unto thy seed have I given this land from the river of Egypt unto the great river, the river Euphrates, <coughs> the Kenites, and the Kenzanites, and the Kimonites, Kadmonites, Kad uh, and the Hittites, and the Perizzites, and the Raphims, and the Amorites, and the Canaanites, and the Girdishites, and the Jebusites. Here we find the Kenzanites, those descendants Caleb come from listed in all the ites of Canaan. Caleb's not a Jew. Caleb's not a Jew. Wait a minute. That's exactly right. Now, God doesn't give us, God doesn't fill in all the details, okay? But somewhere between Abraham and Joseph, some of Caleb's fathers got saved and believed in Jehovah God. And they went to Egypt mm -hmm. and joined the nation of Israel. And then they come out with the nation of Israel. And Caleb did not go back to his forefathers' ways when he got back to Canaan. He stuck with Jehovah. He believed God. First thing we note about Caleb, he's a changed man. You know, just because you have a bad family history doesn't mean you have to have a bad future. Yeah. <laughs> Amen? Amen. Your, your lineage does not have to determine your legacy. You say, Pastor, you don't know where I, where I come from. You don't know the bad dudes in, on my family tree. I got a lot of bad apples on my tree too, okay? You know what? <laughs> hey, but God's grace is sufficient. Amen? Amen. Uh, God can change any man. Say Corinthians 5, 17, If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Amen? All things are past, but go, all things become new. Hey, don't let your lineage <laughs> determine your legacy. You can be different. Um, one thing that um, we're going to talk about here in the men's meeting this week is you can be a chain breaker. Amen? You, you don't have to succumb to the same sins and habitual sins uh, of your family's past. You don't have to be the drunk. You don't have to be the druggie. You don't have to be the gambler. You don't have to be the wife beater. You can break free from all that by God's grace. By God's grace. My life is living proof of that. You look at statistics and you see how children in broken homes end up and children with you know, uh, single home parents and all those things, how they end up in, in statistics and all that. Um, I shouldn't be here. I should be in prison. I should be dead. And it's not because David Smith just beat the odds and he's such a good guy. No, it's because David Smith found the grace of God at the age of eight and got saved. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen being Christ, he's a new creature. Amen. You can change. You can be changed. Caleb was changed. Yes, he come from a, a wicked, a horrible legacy. Or you know, a lineage, we'll say, or his past. But that was not his future. Amen? It did not determine who he was going to be. He determined... I'm going to believe in Jehovah God. I'm going to be different than who my forefathers were. First of all, he was a changed man. 
Second of all, we see he was committed, all right? Look here in, in the passage back in, in uh, Joshua, all right, J Joshua 14. And note how he says this. Uh, this is, I, I just, I love reading this, how he's just reiterating all this. Hey, this is Caleb's testimony. And uh, he says twice here, verse 8, he says, uh, Nevertheless, my brethren, they made my, the heart of the people melt, but I wholly followed the Lord. And then uh, again, uh, it's recorded, verse 14, because that he wholly followed the Lord. Holy there means to be filled to the full, to the brim. He left nothing back. There was no strings attached. Caleb was not a Sunday morning Christian. There was nothing held back. He said, God, I give you everything. He says, Moses, I wholly follow the Lord. I gave it over. I gave everything over to God. There was nothing left on the table. It was a blank check he handed over to God when he gave God his life. He wholly followed God. He was committed. He was all in. There was nothing, nothing set back. Well, you know what? Wait a minute, God. Now, this is kind of my, you know, this is my hobby. This is... Wait a minute, God, this is my dream house. Wait a minute, God, this is my dream job. Wait a minute, God, you can't have this relationship. Wait a minute, God, you, you, this is my little pet sin. You just, you, you can't mess with that. No, there was no hold bars on Caleb's life. He said, I'm totally in. I wholly follow the Lord. If we're going to be a man that God can use and that God will bless, we're going to be all in. I surrender all. We've got to be totally committed. we got to sell out. Before God will sell in. Amen. Before God will buy in. Amen. We're trying to sell God a, we're trying to sell God on a half a half life. God says, I wanted everything. I want everything. Caleb was committed. He says, I wholly follow the Lord. Not only was he committed, but notice, notice next of all here, verses seven and eight. He was courageous. He says, Forty years as I, when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me to spy out, to spy out the land, I brought him word again as it was in my heart. And he says that the heart of the people melted. He, he went in, and here we find him. He went in as a, we'd say, a, a, he was a spy. All right, he spied out the land. Now, um, uh, let's see. It was 45 years ago Caleb sent, been sent to spy out the land. Uh, it was the land of giants. Yet Caleb did, when he saw it, he did not fear. You know, 10 went in, or 12 went in, 10 feared to come out and had faith. The only difference was the perspective. They saw the exact same thing. And the 10 said, oh, me. And Joshua Caleb said, oh, yeah. <laughs> we got this. God's got this. Amen. They had courage. They were courageous. Caleb had been spared from the plague that took the lives of the unbelieving spies 45 years earlier. He had been preserved during the wilderness wanderings. He had survived several years of war in Canaan. You know, he said now he is 80 and 5 years old. He says, uh, verse 10, And lo, I am this day fourscore and five years old. And it's interesting, in his testimony here, some you know, commentators have said, this gives a, a very good timeline as to how things happened uh, for the nation of Israel coming into the land of Canaan. It took them five years to conquer the land. Now, we, we know that based on Caleb's testimony, all right? Um, and so they were uh, 40 years uh, in the wilderness. And now uh, he was 40 years old when he went in to spy the land. 40 years in the wilderness wanderings. Five years conquering the land. And now he's ready to claim his possession. And he knows... Yeah, go down here, uh, the last verse, verse 15 that we read. The last part of it says, uh, which Ar uh, Arba was a great man among the Anakins. That means he was, uh, when it says Arba was a great man, it's speaking of his height, his, his strength. He was a giant among the giants. And the thing here about Caleb being courageous was Caleb knew God had not made him a promise 45 years before just to let him go die at the hands of a giant now. We could say it as the song says, I've come too far to turn back now. I wouldn't take nothing from my journey now. You know, uh, I, I know that God has something for me. And it's not just to go and die at the hand of some giant. 
I have a possession. God's promised it to me. That's my claim. And no giant's going to take it from me. No giant's going to keep it from me. He was courageous. Boy, men, when are we going to, you know, stop shrieking back when and we, we see the claim of God, we see the promise of God, and we say, oh, that's just, I don't know if we can do that, though. I don't know if, the, you know, I don't know if the finances we can do the financing for that. I don't know how, you know, we don't have the manpower for that. What, you know, hey, be strong. Be that strong and very courageous. If we had the promise of God, what else do we need? That's all Caleb had. And he had some big giants. He had the biggest giant. Arbar was great among the Anakims. The Anakims were the giants, but he was the, the big giant. <laughs> hey, he said, it's all right. God ain't promised me uh, something for nothing. He knew the promises of God he could take to the bank. Amen? He was courageous. He was courageous. Well, I could go on on that, but we'll, <laughs> we'll move on. He was consistent. We, we read throughout his testimony here where it pointed out, you know, verse 8, he says, I wholly followed the Lord my God. Uh, verse 7, he says, I brought him word as was in my heart. Uh, now, uh, he's, uh, you know, it's been 45 years. He's come out of lay possession uh, to, to, to claim the possession that's been his. Nothing changed in Caleb's life. Can you imagine the disappointment? I'm almost 40, okay? I've got another year or two to go here whatever my age is. I do that on purpose. I purposely forget how old I am. <laughs> but I know I'm getting close. I can't deny it. 40 years of age, you know, that's that point you want to be set. He's probably thinking, you know, getting to Kedish Barnea's, man, we're going to go in. I'm going to be laying claim to some, some land. I have a nice farm. Get some cattle out there. Some nice crops. We'll be set. Life's going to be good. It was hard in Egypt. The life's going to be good. He goes in. He's chosen to be one of the 12 spies. He goes in. He spies out for Judah. He's their chosen spy. He goes in. He, he sees all the blessings of God. He says, man, this is going to be great. I know what God's done for us, bringing us out. God can definitely bring us into the Canaan land. And there ain't no problem for God. Yeah, there, there's giants and all that, but God's going to do it. And he's just so ex expecting this blessing. And, and it's, you know, he's, he's right to that, that point in life. It's, it's going to be good. Life, the, the, the rest of his life is going to be good. It's going to be, he's going to be sad. They come back out and give the report. Majority rules. Ten. Say, no, we can't do it. They doubt God. And they turn the heart of the people. The hearts of the people melt. God says, fine, then. Forty years you're wandering in the wilderness. And I'll remember the two. We gave, we gave a good report. Joshua and Caleb, you're going in, but you've got to wait 40 years. Forty years. I'm forty now, God. Forty more years. Man, I'm gonna be eighty. Man, I'm gonna be eighty before I'm even set to retire. You know, we think it's bad having to work to you know sixty-two or sixty-five or seventy. You know, what am I gonna have to wait to your eighty-five? Eighty-five to lay claim to the good life we would call it. Would you wait? Could you wait that long? Would you wait that long? All your friends are dying off. Caleb just held on. He was consistent. He said, I got the promise of God that we're getting to that land. And when we, when, we, when we conquer the land, I've got a possession in that land. He had the promise of God. He didn't doubt God. He didn't back down. He just laid claim to the promise of God through the wood. Forty years, he was consistent. Amen. It's been often said, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. Man, so many people, so many people, men and women alike, start off like a firecracker for God, you know? Man, they just take off and they are on fire. They've got zeal. They're out winning souls. And, you know, they're out handing out tracts there at church. Man, they're, they're wanting to see revival every week. They're going to be at church every day. And um, they're, they're pester and pastor for Bible studies. And, and, hey, that's a great thing. I wish it would happen more and more. But you know what? Somewhere along the way, it kind of starts... Dying at start sputtering. Start missing the prayer meeting. Not visiting the track rack as much. Start skipping a Sunday night. Sunday mornings we might make it to morning worship. 
and we're just hanging on, hanging on. What's happening? <clears throat> we're not consistent. Do we want to make a difference? Do we have? Do we know the promise of God? Is it real to us? Man, we, if we're going to lead, we've got to be on fire. Amen. And it's not how you start. It's how you finish. Mm. Amen. We've got to be consistent. Caleb was consistent. 45 years he waited for the promise of God to be fulfilled in his life. The next thing we see in verse 12, he, he made a claim. And, we, we, and this, this kind of ties in here, all right, with some of the other things I've already pointed out. But he says, verse 12, Now therefore give me this mountain. He didn't shy down. He didn't, he didn't shy away from this. He didn't back down. He said, give me this mountain. He said, it's mine. <laughs> Amen. He like claimed the promise of God. He says, that's that mountain that God claimed for me. The, the places where my feet have trod, where I saw the giants, where I saw the grapes, where I, I saw all the land that God was going to give us. He said, that's mine. He laid claim to the promise that God had for him. And he didn't back down. He said, give me this mountain where the Lord spake in that day. He acted upon the promise that he had. You know, how many times, men, we, we know the promises of God. We know the Bible. I mean, all of us, we've been saved here several years. I think our, in our testimony, that's what we would say. We know the promises of God, and yet we don't act upon the promise. You know, James told us, faith that works is dead. We've got to act upon what God told us. We've got to act upon it. And that's what Caleb, he said, God promises to me, and now I'm going to act upon it. I'm going to go out and get it. He laid claim to the promises of God. I want you to turn to another passage, though, here. Uh, go, uh, hold your place here in, in Joshua, but go to uh, Judges. Two of the things that I, I want us to see about Caleb's life. Judges chapter 3. <laughs> this is give an account of when uh, Caleb went in and possessed his land, all right? Uh, <clears throat> Judges 3 and verse 9. It says, And when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, the Lord, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, let's see, uh, this is not, is this is exactly what I, no, no, I'm sorry. Go back to, go, <laughs> go back to Joshua, I'm sorry. I got mixed up on my, my references here. Go to Joshua 15, that's where I meant to go. I thought that sounded a little odd to go that, that far ahead. <clears throat> yeah, Joshua 15 and verse 17. It says, <clears throat> uh, verse 16, And Caleb said, He that smiteth Kirjath Sephar, Sephar and taketh it, to him will I give Ashath my daughter to wife. Now, uh, th this city, remember, is the one that is renamed Hebron, all right? So he, he's, he's going to lay claim to that territory that he's been promised. He's been promised uh, that it is his. And so, verse 17, And Othniel, the son of Kenaz, the brother of Caleb, took it. And he gave him Ash Ashath, Asa, uh, his daughter, to wife. And it came to pass, as she came unto him, that she moved him to ask her of her father a field. And she lighted off her ass, and Caleb said unto her, What wouldest thou? Who answered, Give me a blessing, for thou hast given me a southland. Give me also springs of water. And he gave her the upper springs and the nether springs. This is the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Judah, according to their families. So here we find now, he's going in to possess the land, and this city that he's been promised, um, which it's interesting, too, uh, Caleb had, and just uh, we don't have time to go into all of it, uh, the, the area he was claiming had spiritual significance as well. It wasn't just it was fertile ground. It wasn't just it was a you know, good good crop land uh, and good good for the cattle. This was a good spiritual heritage. Hebron is where Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were all buried. This is the land of his spiritual forefathers. 
He said, that's the mountain I want. That's the land I want. That's the city I'm going to take. This is the land that God promised me. He brought Amazing how his priorities were right. You know, just what, what a what, what a what kind of character he had is just incredible. But here he goes in to possess this, and, and some have suggested maybe he did this. Uh, you know, we, we, we noted he, he's just as strong as he was. All right, uh, there in chapter fourteen, he says the Lord has uh, uh, kept me strong as I was forty five years ago, and yet he's asking for help. Maybe this he did this as a way of finding. Uh, 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 husband for his uh, daughter, all right? Uh, maybe that's why he offered her hand in marriage, so that he could prove who would be a good husband for her. Uh, not so much he needed help, but he wanted to find a good man for her marriage. And here we find his nephew, all right, uh, Othniel, uh, comes forward and takes the city. And uh, they're, they're allowed to do that in this time, all right? And uh, Caleb keeps, on, uh, keeps his word, gives uh, her to be his wife, and then he gives them an inheritance. And so we see that he blesses them and gives them not only, she says, you've given me a south land. He says, uh, she asked for uh, uh, the upper uh, and the nether springs. Give me also springs of water. And then like where they, he had uh, given her an inheritance, did not have good uh, uh, wells and such. And so she wanted more land to build her to farm better. And so he did that. And he blessed his children. You know, um, a good man, a good father, takes care of his family. Amen? You know, 1 Timothy tells us, if a man provides not for his own, for his own house, he's worse than an infidel. Caleb took care of his children. He took care of those under him. He brought calm and, and peace to their life. Back at the end of chapter 14, it says there, and the land had rest from war. And there it's signifying that things finally settled down. Five years of war been going on. Caleb comes in and it's done. He didn't come in and just keep causing trouble. He brought peace and calm. Then when you come home, is, it when, is that when things go out and get out of control? Is that when a house really gets active and gets, you know, unnerved, we might say? Oh, oh, daddy's coming home, daddy's coming home. I've known houses like that. The wife has a good day until you get there. <laughs> hey, let's not have that reputation. Amen. Let's not have that reputation. Hey, our home ought to be a piece of heaven on earth. Where, yes, you represent God Almighty. And she is the bride. Amen. You represent Christ and she is your bride. You have a loving relationship, and the children are the fruit thereof. Hey, there ought to be peace and calm in our homes. There ought to be peace and calm where we work. Caleb blessed his children. Caleb blessed those around him. He blessed his nation. The land had a rest from war. There was calm. The last thing we see then, and this is what we were going to turn to Judges three. Um, there, I mentioned off now. Let me, I'll just read this. Um, I got ahead of myself there. But Judges 3, we see off now mentioned one other time, one more time. Judges 3 and verse 9. This is when, now they've been in the land for a time. Of course, the, the, the time of the judges. And verse 9 says, The children of Israel cried unto the Lord. The Lord raised up a deliverer to the children of Israel, who delivered them even Othniel, the son of Kenaz, Caleb's younger brother. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, and he judged Israel and went out to war. And the, Spirit, and the Lord delivered uh, uh, this guy, <laughs> king of Mesopotamia, into his hand. And his hand prevailed against him. And the land had a rest for 40 years there, verse 11 says. Othniel, as a son-in-law, carried on the tradition. Carried on a spiritual legacy. He became the first judge of the nation of Israel. I can't but think that as a father-in-law, Caleb probably shared some spiritual insight there. 
whenever my daughters come to the age they marry, whenever I let them, <laughs> you hear that? Whenever I let them, I'm going to pour a lot into that young man. Mm -hmm. I'm pouring everything I can into them because he's. I'm going to trust him with my daughter. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm sure Caleb poured a lot into Othniel's life. No doubt militarily, <laughs> probably a lot of husbandry, uh, you know, farming, a lot of spiritual mentoring too. <clears throat> he carried on the legacy. You know, we've got to carry on the legacy. We can't drop the ball on the next generation. It's been said, and it's true of every church, but our church is only one generation away from becoming extinct if we don't reach the next generation, we lose it. It's gone. We've got to be reaching out. We've got to be teaching them. That's why it's important. We take time as, as fathers with our sons, as grandparents <coughs> with our grandchildren, as <laughs> uncles and, and you know, with, with our, our nephews and on and on we could go, all right? Um, we've got to invest time in them and share with them what God has done. And don't drop the, the spiritual legacy. Because if we don't carry it on, no one else is going to pick it up for us. No one else is going to pick up the ball and carry on what you have. So, oh, Pastor, well, you know, they, they, they go to a church and uh, they hear Bible stories and things. And, you know, they go to, they go to school and they learn things. And they get a good, good education and all that. But no one can invest in them what you can. That's your job. That's my job. God gives that responsibility and that privilege to us as men, as husbands, as dads, as grandparents. Amen? Mm -hmm. Caleb recognized that responsibility, and he coached Othniel to become the first judge of Israel. And when the time came, when the, he was needed, there was a man ready. Amen? Because Othniel had been trained and brought up under Caleb. What a blessing. What a spiritual heritage. What kind of legacy are you going to leave? You know, it all starts with being changed. We've got to be saved. Once God changes us, then we can begin to grow. Then we begin to do these other things. But it takes commitment. Being wholly committed to the Lord. It takes courage. It takes courage to believe in God. Yeah, I've said it often, but <clears throat> you live what you believe. You believe what you live. If you really believe something, you're going to act on it. You're going to do it. I knew God wanted me to do it. Despite everything that looked against me. Despite all the visas <laughs> that wouldn't come through. I knew this is where I was supposed to be. And I just kept trusting God. I got a mountain climb. We got residency coming up. It's a lot bigger than any pieces. God wants me right here. I'm going to climb my mountain. Give me this mountain. Amen? What mountain are you climbing? Who are you coaching? Who are you passing on to the next? What are you passing on to the next generation? We need to have a legacy like Caleb. Amen? Let's be men of God. Let's close in a word of prayer.